Nate Burleson, Good Morning Football and CBS Sports. Nate, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you guys doing? It's uh, it's it's a weird vibe, man. Um, like you can't escape it. Like it, it's 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 one of the, it's one of those stories that you can't. Like I just want I just I just I'm just asking you how you are because I'm, I'm I am removed from this in many ways. But watching it last night, watching it today, watching a president go after Colin Kaepernick and go silent today, on this issue, um, I'm almost speechless. Yeah, we're we're in a position right now where <clears throat> there's so many voices um, that are um, at the forefront of what's going on. Some of the voices are louder than others. Um, when it comes to President Trump, he decides to use his voice to say certain things in a certain way that can enrage a certain group of people, if you understand what I'm saying. Yep. Um, but there's also, there's also voices of those who decide to remain voiceless. And it's kind of what you guys are touching on. Here's the thing. If you're not African-American and you decide to remain silent, I'm not going to hate you for that because you can identify it might not hit you the same way. But if you're not African-American and you try to rationalize death of, I'll say a black man because I am black, so I see color or a human, if you try to rationalize death and it's something that's avoidable, yet you're saying, well, if he didn't commit a crime or if he just listened or it seems like he put himself in that situation um, or, you know, I just don't get it. So I don't understand what the big deal. Death is inevitable and it just happens. Don't use your voice for that perspective. Um, I came out and I spoke on this issue because I wanted to make sure people understood that I'm not disconnected from what's going on in reality. Like what would I look like as a black man to be sitting there posting a picture of a new shoe that I bought or, um, you know, what my family is cooking for dinner when there was a gentleman who was handcuffed saying he couldn't breathe for minutes on minutes on minutes on minutes and then asphyxiated till he did die while on camera as a cop looked into the camera with his hands in his pocket as comfortable as ever, what would I look like posting about stuff that doesn't matter? So I decided to post, I decided to post a picture side by side of Colin Kaepernick taking a knee in a silent protest and also this man murdering George Floyd. And then I made a video after that saying, well, listen, here's my perspective. I am not asking for, um, your forgiveness for posting something. I I'm literally just telling you, this is how I see things. And I get it. I get it. There's people that tune into sports shows and watch games and they say, listen, I'm just a fan. I just want to be a fan right now. Life is as intense as it gets. I, I get it. There's some stuff going on systemically in America. There's some social issues that have nothing to do with me. I got stuff going on with my job. My, my, my spouse is getting on my nerves and I, I got to go get diapers at six. And when I get off work, I just want y'all to make me feel good about sports. I understand that. See, that's called understanding. Like I, I feel where you're coming from, right? As an athlete, as a guy who's been there, as a guy who was scoring those touchdowns and a guy who's now on TV, I get where you're coming from. I don't get mad at you for that. I understand it so much that I can answer that back by saying, I appreciate that. I'll do my best every time I'm on TV to give you what you need. But more importantly, I need you to understand that when I am out, when I am outside of my comfort zone, which is my house in the suburbs or my studio where I record at or a uniform when I'm playing sports, I can't turn off my blackness. You know, some people could turn off TV, turn off the radio and be like, yo, I'm going to just, I just can't take it no more, man. News is stressing me out. That's why I don't watch the news. That, cause, cause, I, cause it just seems like every time I turn it on, I just feel depressed. People can do that. There's a ton of people that can do that. I can do that. We can do that. Those listening can do it right now as I'm talking. But what I can't do, I can turn off my blackness. I can't, I can't, 
I can't walk outside and, and, and tint it a little bit. I can't walk outside and, and get lighter a little bit. I can't walk outside and say, hey, today, you know what? Hey, guys, Nate Burleson, I'm going to just be something I'm not today just so, so I don't feel that, feel that anxiety. When a cop pulls me over, I can't say, you know what? All right, let me turn into white Nate real quick so my heart doesn't race and my stomach doesn't drop and I don't feel nervous and feel like my life could be threatened at any moment. And that isn't me taking a shot at any person in a uniform. I'm not generalizing. Anybody that knows me knows where I come from, know where I've been, and knows how I look at life. I look at humans as humans. I see color because I am that. But when it comes to understanding the world that we live in, as many superheroes as there are putting on uniforms that are out there fighting day and night for us to protect and serve, as many white people that I know that I can call brother, sister, that's my family right there. Blood couldn't make us any closer. Yeah, there's, there's people that, that make them look bad. Just like there's African-Americans that make African-Americans look bad. Just like there's ball players that make ball players look bad. I don't get mad at you. I just hope you don't generalize. So when, when people see a situation like this and a black man gets up and he starts talking about his plight and his pain and how he sees the world, I'm not asking you to identify and agree with me. I'm just asking you to have a little bit of empathy and understanding because my version of America is in your version of America. You know, we're sitting up here north of the border and we like to, you know, we like to say that we're a little bit different and you can argue that um, both ways. But the one thing that Sid and I wanted to do today was, and, and you did this, I felt like when you spoke, for those who don't know, Nate did a, a what was like 16 minute talk into a camera that he posted on Instagram. Yeah. And, and Nate, I was, I watched it and it was heavy. Uh, it was, I, the only thing I wanted to do today was give you the opportunity to kind of do the same with us because I wanted to be there with you because that's all that we can do is, is to not be silent and allow, you know, the platform for you to, for you to speak. But when you when you recorded it, when was it for likes? And we're not doing this for likes. We're just doing this because you're a friend of the show, and we want to hear your perspective and understand your opinion, so that so that we know uh, where you're coming from. But what, when you when you sat down to do that, did you have any pretense in your mind, or was it just no, just one platform, no pretense? Go. I I had so many people respond to my picture of Cap taking a knee. And then that cop murder and George. And I, I just thought there needs to be more dialogue. A picture can say whatever you want it to say. And I had so many different perspectives of it. Some people saying, well, Nate, I see those pictures and I don't like either of them. I, I, I see those pictures and I feel like Cat was wrong and he's not a hero. I see those pictures and I feel like I feel like George, if he didn't commit a crime, he would still be alive. I, and I, I see those pictures and, and I, I, I'm mad because a, a black man handcuffed should, should, should not have died. And in an avoidable situation, he should not have died. So I, I, I read all those and I just got tired of responding and responding because I, right. I want to I talk to people. I don't, I don't want to argue with people. So I just said, I'm going to just do a video. I'm not going to write anything down. I'm going to just talk and speak from my heart. And you post it afterwards and let, and let whoever wants to listen to it, listen to it. I, there's a question that people keep asking. You can be black and removed from this. There's, I know there might be some folks that aren't directly connected to this type of pain are saying, well, well what can I do? Because obviously I see this is wrong and I know this is wrong, but what can I do from where I'm at? I'm not even in that city. I'm not even in that country. Like, what can I do? I think it's, it's, it's like the message I talk to about my kids. I can't, I can't feel so much pain that I go downstairs and I generalize every white person and every police officer. Because if I do, my kids are going to walk outside and that seed is going to blossom into hate. And they're going to walk around with hate in their heart. And it's going to spill out in conversation. It's going to spill out in school. It's going to spill out in confrontation. It's going to spill out in, in interaction with somebody in a position of authority. I can't do it. 
I refuse to do it. I wasn't raised like that. I feel like this place would be a better place if we don't plant those seeds of hate, we plant seeds of love. So when I talk to my kids, I'm like, look, what I need y'all to do one is understand reality. That when you walk outside, you could be perceived as a threat simply because of the color of your skin. All right? We understand what we've seen on TV time and time again. And these are the things that are caught on camera. Imagine what hasn't been caught on camera. All right? I give them that real reality. And then I give them the other reality, and I'll say, look, there's real life, real life cops that are superheroes. There's real life men and women that are different races of you that are amazing people. There's people that look like you that are amazing. There's people that look like you that aren't so amazing. Okay. But I need you to understand that when you're sitting in a moment where somebody does something ever so subtle and we've all been guilty of it. I have, whether you hear a joke that is driven by stereotypes whether you say something that you saw on a comedy special that might have the slightest bit of racism, but you're like, man, I ain't racist. Come on now. I ain't, I ain't that type of dude, but it, I, I think it's funny. Or you, or you're with a group of people and somebody says something and you don't say anything. I feel like we're at a point now in 2020 where as uncomfortable as it may be, you say, Hey, yo, now nah, that ain't cool. And if they want to hit you with the, Oh, who are you? You, 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 Mr. Uh, politically correct. Well, maybe I am. I just feel like right now that isn't the time. And I, I feel like right now that isn't, that isn't cool. So when I talk to my kids, I tell them that. And I was like, you don't have to be a hero. You don't have to be the guy that saves the day, but you can walk with a certain sense of integrity. And the reason I, I wanted to start with my kids and younger kids is because that's the younger generation. This hate is coming from somewhere, whether it's racism or a cop that sees a black man and he either hates him or fears him. I feel like, like this all started somewhere. There was a plea, a, a seed planted somewhere. So for those asking like, yo, Nate, what can I do? All I ask is that when you see death and you have a heartbeat, you let your heart talk to you, which if it's a real heartbeat, you feel sad and just show a little empathy and understanding like, damn, that should not have happened. I feel bad for the situation. I feel bad for that family. I just hope this works out and justice takes its course. That's, that's one thing. And you don't even need to, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to tweet. You don't need to go out and protest. You just need to have that feeling inside. And we know when it's genuine. Second thing is you teach kids and teach yourself that in a moment where people start to throw a little bit of the hate around and spew a little bit of racism and that subtle, like stereotypes, if it's not in a way that we can all, we can all, and I mean all of us, 100% of us laugh at and think it's funny, then I think somebody should just be like, that's not cool. Because those things, those things, those are the roots of the racism. And, I, and, I, and that's all I ask. I've had a bunch of friends that are white that have reached out to me and they're like, Nate, man, we go back a long way. I love you. And the first thing I say is I love you too. What can I do? What can I do? I was like, just keep being a voice when things are wrong. Just keep being a voice. And what I love about this situation um, is that I've seen officers of every shade, black, white, Asian, stepping up and saying that officer was wrong because we don't see that accountability that often. You know, there's always this code that you protect your own. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we got to, we got to keep, we got to keep quiet. We can't really, we can't really point out, our brethren that is out there doing some absolutely horrific thing. But I, I, I see these cops and they're stepping up and they're saying, nah, man, this dude, what was he on the force? 20 years. He had all these infractions. I think he got multiple bodies on his gun. Like this dude has been in a situation before where he has taken a life. And this is how you choose to deescalate a situation. That's wrong. I think that's powerful. That's powerful. And if we, all, if we all can do that, and I'm, I'm literally, as I'm talking to you, I wish there was a camera. I'm literally standing in my bedroom looking into a mirror. And the reason I'm so passionate behind it is because I also have to do this. I also have to be that guy. I also have to be the one that's not too cool for school when somebody says something or my kids come home and they repeat a joke and let it slide because it's not that serious. It is. Because eventually... It's like, like, like hate, it's like a snowball and like it, it just rolls and rolls until it gets too big to where we can't control it. 
and it just rolls over us. But if we just disassemble it in the beginning, I don't think it'll destroy us like it is right now. And it might not directly affect you. I know those are like, well, Nate, it's, it has nothing to do with me. So, but let me tell you how a black man thinks. And this is, this is the, you guys know me, Mr. Optimism. Nate, hey, bro, so loves everybody. Give me a hug. I'll, I'll see you meet you for the first time. Get you shirt off my back. That's me. But I see this time and time again, right? It's like, damn, another video? What happened? Botham Jean, a female cop walked into the wrong apartment. How'd she walk in the wrong apartment? And shot him in his own place? What was it? Atiana Jefferson? Brianna, Brianna, Brianna Taylor? What? What happened? They shot through the window. It was the wrong house. What? What? Now you got this guy who's just like, who would literally tip his hat, say hi to every person he meets. I don't care what color you are, what race, what religion, culture. I'm that guy. But when I see it over and over and over again, I start to feel like we're not being as protected as other people, or maybe we're being targeted more than other people. When I walk down the street, instead of being the pure Nate, my heart is calloused. And now my, my scope is cloudy and I'm looking at you and I'm looking at you differently. I'll give you an example. I'm at a grocery store. There was this white guy, older white guy, he's staring at me. And usually I say, hey, how you doing? But I didn't. Just looking at him, I'm like, what is he thinking about me? What is he, what is he, is he judging me? Does he, what, does he think, you think I'm stealing? Like, why is this dude staring at me? Like, I don't get that. What is his problem? I don't got time for this today, man. He gonna stare at me, I'm gonna stare right back at him. He walks closer, I'm like, all right, here we go. I guess this is confrontation time. He gets closer, pauses for a second. Hey, Nate, man, I love what you do on TV. <laughs> man, great job, man. Big fan of you, man. I love how you transition out of the league and you're in the TV. And I have to take a breath, and I'm like, holy smokes. Like, what I'm seeing, the pain that I'm feeling, is causing me to approach life differently. So when people say, what's the big deal? Like, if, you, if it doesn't have to do with you, it's not your family member, why are you tripping? It makes us look at life differently. That's, that's a different type of feeling to walk in your house and then walk out the next day with a different scope, a different vision because of the pain you feel. So that's, that, that's all we ask is just a little understanding and a, and a little empathy. We all, we all could use that because I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that when you go through anything. You got a splint in your finger. I'm going to walk up to you. What's up, man? How you doing? You all right? What you need? Some tweezers? You going to put it in water or what? How are we going to get this out? So death, death, something that used to be used to be so horrific that we were all distraught by it is all of a sudden so normal and we're not. That's, that's something we got to change as a, as a race, as a human race. Uh, Nate, your voice was needed today. And, um, I know there's back and forth about your schedule and whatnot. I I'm very thankful and Tim in the audience that you managed to find time for us today. And, um, I don't know what to say off that other than, um, we appreciate you no. and we're listening and our audience really appreciates you. And, uh, we wish you nothing but the best over the coming days. Thank you very much, man. Hey, listen, um, we met, seems like a short time ago, but we've became so close since then. And I appreciate you guys. And I tell you that when I see you and when I describe you guys as my brothers, I truly mean that. And I feel your energy when we're laughing and joking. And I also feel your energy when things aren't going so well, um, even across the border. Um, I, I feel like, um, we're as close as ever. So Thank you for everything you guys do in the sports realm. Um, but moments like this uh, really define who you are. And I'm appreciative to just be associated with you, too. Uh, same you know. goes the other way. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. Be well. Guys. Stay well. And all the best of the family.